Midnight Mass is the newest TV series to trend on Netflix, so I thought I'd give it a shot with my wife. And after seven episodes, I can safely say, it's not for everyone. An angel appeared to me a couple nights ago and said, Adam, what are you doing? Tell people to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So I'm doing that now. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Thanks, angel. The show's called Midnight Mass, so I was already a little bit hooked because I love Billy Talent and they have a song called Devil in a Midnight Mass. They have no relation to each other as far as I know, but I love both. Let's get that out of the way right away. I started out by saying this show's not gonna be for everyone and that's probably even an understatement. The series is seven episodes. They're median length, they're about an hour, maybe an hour plus on some. And it is a slow burn. And when I say slow, I mean it, damn it. There are some very lengthy one-on-one -on -one interactions where people are talking for what feels like an eternity. And the stories they tell aren't even that interesting. But what makes it kind of different than most other shows is the way they talk the way they speak through their dialogue is almost organic. I'm sure it's all scripted, but the actors present it in a way that almost feels off the cuff at times, especially the priest who's phenomenal in this. He stumbles on some of his words, he seems unsure of himself, he'll change stories halfway through sentences. It, it's good, it's really good, well-written stuff. I don't wanna give anything away because I do recommend you at least give this a shot and push through two episodes. The first one is tedious to get through with very little happening, but the second one starts to really ratchet things up. So a very quick overview on this thing. It takes place on the island of Crockett. It's very small, it's got a tight-knit community, but it's one that's been fractured over many years of hardships, both internally within each individual and the town as a whole, thanks to an oil spill. There's nothing for tourists here. No one comes to this town except for a brand new sheriff. Sheriff Hassan is the fish out of water character. He and his son moved here to try to start a new life in a smaller secluded area. They learn the ins and outs pretty quickly. There's the town drunk. There's the overly judgmental sister from the church. And then there's Riley Flynn who's come home for the first time in many years after spending a while in prison for driving intoxicated and killing a young girl. The show follows multiple people who are all struggling with inner demons. That's not the only thing happening though, there's something else taking place on this island. Miracles are starting to occur. How is this happening though? That's the big mystery. I'm not giving you anything else on the plot, there's too much goodness here to ruin, to spoil. I just want to say give it a shot. I did. I wanted to walk away after the first episode, first episode and a half, I thought this is so lame. This is. There's not enough of a carrot at the end of the first episode to even get me invested more. The characters themselves are all very hollow. They, they, they're shells of people they once were, so that's not the most interesting people to listen to, right? They're fighting with their own personal conflicts, haunted by past decisions, uh, but there is a looming, ominous threat. There is a supernatural event taking place that's questioning people's faith or maybe solidifying it. The Bible stuff in this is fascinating too. It's not just this black and white bullshit. It really goes into specific scripture and how people interpret it and look at it and the ways they will bend it to their needs. The ways they will look and say, oh, you know what? This means this, so we should do it this way. That's what God intended. And the ramifications of such choices. The night scenes, which are frequent, look really great. It's hard to film night stuff a lot of the times. You get grain, it looks unnatural. Here though, it's very polished. It looks beautiful. The approach is very practical, not a lot of CG. At least not that I could tell. They're fooling me if they're using it, which is impressive. I was raised Catholic for the first half of my life. I identify as an atheist now, sorry if that upsets you, I have no judgment on your end. So when they started quoting scripture, when they started singing all those traditional songs and going through a lot of the ceremonies, I was taken back to, to a much different time in my life. It was wild. If that's the kind of thing that might put you off or set you off, uh, there's a fair warning. There is a lot of quoting of the scripture, a lot of Bible stuff in this movie. It doesn't shy away from the good or a lot of the bad, mostly bad. If you're a very religious person and you watch this show, I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. I, I haven't seen a show quite like this. Last time, give it a shot. If you don't like it, you can hate me for it, but I think it's, it's worth at least checking out. I'm watching Squid Game now. I'm only like half an episode in with my wife, so we're going through that one. I'll review that probably in a week or so when I get it done in between movie reviews. I encourage you once more to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, like the video if you had a good time, and hopefully I'll see you stick around.
Hey, since you're still here, maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, or you can join right here via YouTube. There's a, there's a join button. It's just a way to say, you know what, Adam? I don't go to church. I don't give to the donation box, but I'll give to you. You're doing a good job. Why don't you take a dollar a month or $5 a month to keep your passion project going? And I would say thank you. God bless.